Okay, well, let's continue with the topic of question answering. Uh, the next segment is going to be about uh, some of the uh, most important Q&A systems developed over the years. Uh, I already gave you some of the examples of systems before TREK. Now I'm going to continue with systems that were developed for TREK and after TREK. So starting in 99, the first system is ANSO, John Prager et al, 1999 from IBM. It was designed specifically for TREK and it has the following components. It includes something called predictive annotation, which means uh, that every named entity in the document collection, a coin corpus, is labeled with the candidate answer type, such as person and location. It uses a standard machine learning technique, logistic regression, uh, to compute scores for each of the uh, candidate answers. So here's an example. One of the questions is, when was Yemen reunified? So uh, the way that predictive annotation works is that it's somewhere between uh, two extremes of question answering. So one of those extremes would be something that is purely knowledge-based, NLP-based, for example, using a parse tree of the sentence, and something that is completely bag of words type, for example, an IR approach, in which case you have uh, vector representations of documents and queries and sentences, and you're just looking for the passage that contains uh, uh, the words that are most similar to the query. So predictive annotation is somewhere in the middle, it labels every named entity with an appropriate uh, category, time, expression, uh, person, location, and so on. So here's an example of how it works in practice. Uh, one of the track questions from 99 was, who is the author of the book, The Iron Lady, a biography of Margaret Thatcher? So this question is converted into uh, an internal representation that has Iron Lady as a phrase, a biography of Margaret Thatcher as a phrase, and then it gives different weights to the different types of words. For example, biography and book and author and so on. And then in green, uh, in the middle of the screen, you can see the so-called uh, scene categories for the uh, expected answer. So who questions correspond to persons, organizations, names, and roles in the named entity uh, space. Then, uh, the next few lines show a sample document that was retrieved by the system. Its uh, label is in the middle, its uh, overall IR score is given next, and then one of the passages in this document is shown at the bottom of the page. As you can see, uh, there are multiple named entities. One is Biography of Margaret Thatcher that was labeled by the NER agent as a name. Uh, the next thing is Hugo Young, which was labeled as a person, Farrer, Strauss, and Giroux, which was marked as an organization. And finally, Margaret Thatcher was labeled as a person. And now, what we really need to do here is to identify the uh, entities that have types that match the expected types of the question. So we're going to skip some of them. For example, uh, uh, in this example, actually, place def is not on the list of question types expected. And we're going to focus on the other four, which actually correspond to the four categories in green. So here are some important observations about this kind of work. Uh, if a document contains the answers to the question, uh, the query words tend to appear in close proximity to each other. So, for example, the author and the name of the book and the name of the person, like Margaret Thatcher, all appear near each other in the answer sentences. Uh, another observation is that the answers to fact-seeking questions are usually phrases, so this is consistent with the idea of predictive annotation, and those phrases can be categorized by question type, and the phrases can be identified using uh, simple pattern matching techniques commonly used in named entity recognition. So in our case, once we have the candidate uh, answers that match the question types, what kind of features can we use uh, to rank them and pick the one that we want uh, as the first one? So in ANSO, the following features were used, average distance and several others which I'm going to show you in the next few uh, seconds. So average distance is the average distance between uh, the words at the beginning of the passage retrieved and the words of the queries that also appear in the passage. So for example, if the question is, who was Johnny Mathis' high school track coach? And the passage is, uh, Timo Donahue, comma, Woodbridge High School's varsity baseball coach resigned Monday and will be replaced by assistant Johnny Ceballos, comma, athletic director David Cowan said. 
So in this example, uh, the passage that we're considering as the candidate answer to the original question is Timo Donahue. We want to compute how far that phrase, Timo Donahue, is from the words uh, that appear also in the question. So the question words are high school, uh, which appears a few words later in the sentence, uh, the word track, which doesn't appear, and the word coach, which appears about six words to the right. So the average distance between Timo Donahue and the words from the query is about eight. Another feature is not in query. So not in query reflects the number of words in the passage that do not appear in the query. So for example, if uh, one of the candidate answers is Woodbridge High School, it's going to have a not in query score of one because the words high and school appear in the query, whereas the word Woodbridge doesn't. The third uh, feature is frequency. This is just the number of times a given passage appears in the hit list. The next one is S-score. This is the search engine relevance score. So it's actually how relevant that particular sentence is to the original query according to the underlying search engine. The fifth feature is number. That is the position of the span or the short text passage that we're considering among all the spans returned. So in this example, Lou Vasquez is the first example that was returned in all the passages. The next one is relative span number. This is the position of the span among all the spans returned within the current passage. So in the example here, the R span no value for Timo Donahue would be one, Woodbridge High School would be two, and so on. And finally, count is the number of spans of any span class retrieved within the current passage. So in our example, we have Timo Donahue, Woodbridge High School, Monday, Johnny Ceballos, and Athletic Director Dave Cowan. So five, that would be the answer to this uh, question here. And the final uh, feature is the type, which is the position of the span type in the list of potential span types for that particular question. So uh, for who questions, the answers are expected to be person, organization, name, and role, but those are not in any order. They are actually ordered so that person is the most likely one, organization is the second most likely, and so on. So we want uh, any candidate answer span that is a person to get a higher score than one that is an organization or name or all. And now we can continue with a full table with all the features. So on the left hand side we have all the candidate spans or candidate answer passages. For each of those, we have their type, the values of the different feature, and finally, the composite score computed by the logistic regression function. And then when you sort the passages based on this uh, value, you get that Lou Vasquez gets the highest score and is therefore returned in first place by the system. Timo Donahue is in second place and so on. Now, whether this is the correct answer is not really relevant here. What's important is uh, to understand how the system works. Okay, so this was an IBM system from 99. The next system is from AT&T Research. It's a system developed by Abney et al. called Ionaut. It used to be available online, but it's not uh, there anymore. It again is based on passage retrieval. It uses the Salton and Buckley start system, which is one of the classic information retrieval systems as their backend. It then performs entity recognition using Abney's CAS parser. This is a partial parser that recognizes chunks, uh, such as uh, non-recursive noun phrases, for example, names of people and dates and so on. And then it uses, just like the IBM and the Illinois system, uh, uses entity classification, uh, but only for eight question types. The next system that I want to mention is from 2001. It was uh, developed by Cody Quark from the University of Washington and other researchers on there. This was the first large-scale web Q&A system that used uh, the full uh, web index. Uh, it involves uh, several off-the-shelf natural language components. For example, it has a maximum entropy parser uh, from the Charnier Group at Brown University. It uses PC Kimo Antworth uh, system for uh, part of speech tagging and morphological analysis for unknown words. It uses a very old uh, version of a dependency link parser by Slater and Temperley. And it uses Google as the underlying search engine. It performs tokenization, it identifies phrases in quotes, and uh, it performs query transformation. So, for example, a question like When did Nixon visit China? is expected to appear in the original text as Nixon visited China, as opposed to 
having uh, the verb in the infinitive and having a question word. They're essentially expecting uh, the text in the corpus to be very different syntactically from the question type, and they can confer, com, convert uh, the questions into this format automatic. The fourth system is from the University of Michigan. It's called Answer from 2002. Uh, it is uh, based on probabilistic phrase re-ranking. So this, the idea behind it is that every candidate named entity or span has a signature, which is a sequence of parts of speech, for example, two nouns or a noun followed by a prepositional phrase. And then you have a training corpus from which you determine the probability of having a certain question type associated with a specific signature. So for example, if the signature is two consecutive proper nouns, NNP, NNP, uh, then the probability that this is the name of a person is very high. So here's an example, Bill Gates is a name of a person, NNP, NNP is the most likely uh, sequence of parts of speech that corresponds to a person. So answer uses again uh, off-the-shelf search engines as the back end. At that time, those were Google, but also some uh, old search engines such as All the Web, uh, Northern Light, and Alta Vista. The next system is Ask MSR uh, by Michelle Banco et al. 2002 from Microsoft Research. It's based on the assumption that if a question is important, that means that somebody has already answered that question on the web. Uh, its components are shown in this diagram here directly from the paper. So here's uh, what a typical flow looks like. We have a question such as where is the Louvre Museum located? The first component is a rewrite query component where uh, the original question is converted into likely patterns such as the Louvre Museum is located or the Louvre Museum is in, or the Louvre Museum is near, or just the Louvre Museum is, or finally just the word Louvre and museum and near. So those queries are again the output of the query rewriting or query modulation component. Those are sent in parallel to a search engine. Uh, the passages that are returned by the search engine are then collected. Only the summaries or the uh, uh, snippets returned from each document by the search engine are considered. Then all the n-grams, uh, for example, two, three, four word long n-grams are collected from those passages. And then those are filtered and tiled. So the tiling process means that if you have uh, one uh, bigram that consists of the words A and B, and another one that consists of the words B and C, the uh, tiling component is going to merge them together into uh, a trigram A, B, and C. So in this case, for example, in Paris could be uh, from one biogram returned by the search engine, whereas Paris, France could come from a completely different biogram, and those two are tied together into the trigram in Paris, France. And as you can see in this very simple example, uh, there are three candidate answers of which one is correct, and that is the one that ranks in first place. So uh, one more example of tiling. If you have Mr. Charles and Charles Dickens, that could be combined into Mr. Charles Dickens. Okay, so the last system that we're going to talk about in this segment is by Shihabi and Marco. Uh, it introduces for the first time the noisy channel model where uh, on one end you have uh, questions and on the other hand you have sentences that contain the answers to the questions. And the idea is to pick uh, the answer sentence that maximizes some probability given the question. And uh, it turns out that this kind of work requires a sentence simplification so that it's possible to learn the probabilistic model uh, accurately. So in the next segment, we're going to look at some more uh, systems uh, about question answering.